Hey ho, my name is Jo and I have some books I want to talk about. Hello there, my name is Joanna. I refer to myself here as Jo right on this wonderful booktube community because if you are new, that's who I am. But your total, typical coffee-loving book addict who will always give a book a chance at least once if you recommend it to me. So please leave a recommendation down below because I'm always looking for something new. So in today's video, as you can see by the title, this is a little bit different of a video that I would normally do. The, I think it was, I said 10. Was it 10? Oh, let me look at my notes. Yeah, so this is the 10 books that are on the top of my Amazon wish list. Haley and Bookland actually kind of had this idea and I thought it was a really good idea. So that's why I'm kind of sharing this video with you guys. These are the books that have kind of been on my radar since somebody recommended them to me. And here we are. I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. I'm going to be posting all pictures and everything right here as well so you guys can see them. So there's 10 of them. Each synopsis is a little bit long, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first one that is on my list is Dear Edward by Anne Napoleon. I don't know how to say her name, but yeah. One summer morning, 12-year-old Edward Alder and his beloved brother and his parents and 183, uh, 183 passengers board a flight into Newmark headed for Los Angeles. Among them is a Wall Street Winderkind, Winderkind, Winderkind? Yeah, I guess so. A woman who coming to terms with an unexpected pregnancy, an injured vet returning from Af Afghanistan, and among other people, who they're all, and then there's also a free woman running away from her husband. They all tragically, they all tragically just die in this plane crash, and Edward is the only survivor. And I came across this book last year and it was actually on my most anticipated reads list and I haven't got my hands on a copy of it yet but it is definitely on the top of my wish list because I'm definitely getting lost vibes from it if you guys have ever seen that TV show I'm definitely kind of getting that kind of vibe from it and I'm really really excited to kind of see where the story would go and I just can't get myself to buy it yet mind you I actually have all these books in my Amazon cart and it's over $300 right now. Just don't tell Edward. Alright, number two is The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. Now, one thing about this one is I know this is a World War II book and I know it's a Holocaust book and that's all I really need to know about it to be honest with you because when it comes to anything World War II or the Holocaust, I am all over it. That is one of my favorite genres. And actually the synopsis on this is actually quite interesting so I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. In April of 1942, Lake Skavo, a Skavarian Jew, is forcibly transported in the concentration camps of Auschwitz. When his captors discovers that he speaks several languages, he is put to work as a tattooer. And tattooer is spelled a little weird so I'm going to post that right here. It's, a, it's just the German word for tattooist. He's permanently tasked with marking his fellow prisoners. Imprisoned for more than two and a half years, Lael witnesses horrific atrocities and barbarism, who also incredible acts of bravery and compassion, risking his own life as he privileges, using his privileged position to exchange jewels and money for murder. Jews for food to keeping his fellow prisoners alive. One day in July 1942, Lael Prisoner 32407 comforts a trembling woman waiting in line to have her number 34902 tattooed on her arm. Survive the camp and marry her. So it kind of definitely feels like a love story, but it's World War II vibes. It's Holocaust vibes. It's everything that I love and I am very very excited to dive into this and I just I can't wait. So next we have Call It What You Want by Bridget Kemmerer. Er, I hope you want to say her name. So this is I think this one was the sequel 
to Letters to the Lost. Maybe. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, when his dad is caught embezzling funds a half from a half town, Rob goes from popular lacrosse team to a social parrot. Even worse, his father... His father's failed suicide attempt leaves Rob and his mother responsible for his care. Everyone thinks of Megan a typical overachiever, but she has a secret of her own and the pressure had got to her last year when her sister comes home from college pregnant, her keeping her parents keeping a secret from her parents might be more than she can handle. So there was a little bit more to that, but my honest thoughts on this, it's the Bridget Kemmerer book, and I fell in love with this author when I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely, so I kind of been trying to kind of build up my collection from her, definitely trying to reach out and do different books and stuff by her, just because I loved Letters to the Lost, that was like one of my favorite books of last year, and I loved A Curse So Dark and Lonely, one of my favorite books of this year and last year as well. So I'm hoping maybe this one will also be a favorite book of this year. So if I get it this year, who knows? I don't even know if I'm going to get any of these books. But anyway, we're going to move on. Next is Matched by Ali Kondai, I'm thinking her name is. Um, a lot of, don't really see a lot of people on BookTube actually talk about this one. I don't know if I've gone back far enough because this book came out... <sighs> quite a while ago, but not many people talk about it. But I started reading it a while ago on my Kindle and I never actually finished it. I kind of want a physical copy of it. So that's why it's on this list. But in a society where officials decide who you love, where you work, where you die. Casa has always trusted their choices and hardly any price to pay for a long life. The perfect job, the ideal mate. So when her best friend appears on the matching screen, Cassa knows with a complete certainty that he is the one until she sees a face flash in for an instant before the screen fades to black. Now Cassa is faced with an impossible choice between Alexander or Kai, between the only life she has known, the path where no one else has dared to follow, between perfection and passion. So it definitely falls under the category of the typical YA romance, but, you know, why not? So this next one, I feel like it's kind of a little bit out of my genre, a little bit out of my way of reading, um, but Emma Books had mentioned this, and she absolutely loved it, as if I can remember, and I it's been on my radar ever since she mentioned it, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth. Now this follows a... 15 year old girl who gets entangled with a affair and she just ends up getting accused of sexual abuse and she's just told to remain silent is what I'm kind of getting from it. She was rejected by the first love, the per first person that she ever loved and it just, I feel like it follows a teenager. I'm not reading the whole synopsis because it's pretty long. Um, but it alternates between the past and the present, and it goes from the memory and the trauma of being a teenage girl over to the adulthood, maybe. I really don't really remember uh, what she said, but Emma Books, I believe, gave this 5 out of 5 stars. So I've always trusted her opinions, and I'm really, really excited to actually see what this one is about. Alright, number six is Crave by Tracy Wolf. Now, I haven't heard much about this one. I feel like a lot of people, they feel like they said that they loved it or they hated it. So I'm kind of really see, wondering where I'm going to form that because I always try to make my own opinion about books. And the synopsis is kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and read this to you. My whole world changed when I stepped inside the academy. Nothing is right about this place nor the other students that are in it. Here I am, mere mortal, among gods, among monsters. I can't decide which one is the wearing factor I belong to, if I belong at all. I know I'm, I'm the one that unites them for their hatred for me. Then there is Jackson Vega, a vampire with deadly secrets who hasn't felt anything for a hundred years. But then there's something about him that calls him to me, something broken and something that somehow fits what's broken with me. 
it could spell out death for us all. Because Jackson wailed himself for all reason, and now someone who wants to be, wake a sleeping monster, and I'm wondering if I've ever brought here intentionally, or I was brought here as bait. So, it kind of gives you, like, Twilight vibes. I feel like it might be a Twilight retelling. I don't know, but either way, it does sound pretty interesting. It kind of seems like it's kind of set like in a boarding school, so I really like kind of like the boarding school vibes and whatnot. So, all right. So this next one, everybody's been talking about. For this one, next one, everybody talked about it last year, and I still haven't even jumped on the bandwagon and read it. I still haven't got a copy of it, but I really want a copy of it. That's why it is on this list. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not going to go into details of what this is about. I feel like everybody under the sun knows what this is about. If you're not sure what it's about, I will leave a link to it down below on going over to Goodreads so you guys can read the synopsis. Because I copied all the synopsises right off of Goodreads. So that's exactly what I have on this paper. But I've just been wanting to get my hands on this and I just haven't yet. And... It needs to be in my hand, like now, like yesterday, like last year. That's when it needs to be in my hand. And number eight, we have Dark and Deepest Red by Anne Marie McGlorm. I know I'm saying that name wrong, uh, but this is was actually also on my most anticipated reads list. And this follows kind of like witchcraft and like suspicions on like kind of like the Salem witch trials because it's set in like 1518 and you follow I don't know if this actually says her name Lavana yeah okay so you follow Lavana and her family and she basically got to sacrifice a couple of things in order to save her family number eight is the way back by Jamie Fuey 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 I, I don't know I'm not sure um but this one was also on my most anticipated reads list. This follows a brother and a sister who are not really close, like, at all. But then they get a call saying that their father is dying or that his father is really sick. And they basically have to reunite with each other and they have to go home and take care of it all. So I was intrigued by this one because I feel like... I would not know what I would do without my siblings and this what kind of drew me in because it was kind of like a brother-sister relationship and I have three older brothers so I kind of I have a really close relationship with one of these brothers and I could not imagine with him out without my life and I'm kind of really curious to see oh sorry it was after their mother's death so there was a mother's death and okay so their mother had died and then there was a bunch of family troubles they were all unhappy and that was about, about 10 years ago and then they get a call saying that their father was dying and where or his father had died or their father had died and they must basically fulfill out his will is what they're essentially doing so I'm kind of really excited to kind of see where that will go because who knows I I'm really close to my brother so I kind of can't imagine not talking to my brother for 10 years and then all of a sudden having to talk to him again it just seems weird. Anyway, I'm really excited to actually see what that one is. I think I might actually pick this one up really soon. Like, this one might be getting sent to me on Friday. We'll see. Today is Monday, by the way, just so you guys know. Anyway, and the last one on this list, I feel like everybody in the sun has talked about it, but ever since Brittany the Bibliophile read it, she absolutely adored it. It took her like three months to read. And she absolutely loved it. And that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kwan, or King. Not sure how to say that. I'm not going to go into great details about this because I feel like everybody on The Sun talks about it. But this is definitely one of those that I am very, very excited to even just get my hands on. So, I feel like this is also be one of those ones that I will throw into my cart and purchase as well. So if you made it this far on this really weird, random, boring video, I feel like it was. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out all my links down below because if I'm not here doing a video, not editing or not reading, I'm probably on social media if I'm not working. So that's why those links are there. That way so you guys can follow along with me wherever I happen to go throughout my day. Guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I am quirky, I'm weird, and I'm random, and I always 
post videos at random, but I've been getting better at it. So you definitely want to check all those down below. So that's why it's all there. That's why the subscribe is there. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.